It's the winter of 1839. Joseph Smith and his companions are sitting in a jail cell in Liberty, Missouri on charges of treason and murder. Local jailer Samuel Tillery is tasked with watching the state's most wanted men as they await a court hearing. During their imprisonment, public tension rises. Mobs seeking vigilante justice come together to try and remove the prisoners by force so they can execute them. Tillery, caught between the locals' desire to remove the prisoners and the prisoners' efforts to survive, now faces threats against his own life and decides to take matters into his own hands. With six guns ablazing, Tillery stands his ground and faces the men head on. My job is to keep the prisoners till justice can run its course, Tillery says. Any man who has a problem with that can take it up with me. That's the premise for Out of Liberty, a new western premiering in theaters throughout eastern Idaho this weekend. Casey Elliott, one of the stars of the film, joins us now to talk about it. You play a character named Hiram Smith. Do you want to tell me about this character a little bit? Yeah. Um, so he's the older brother of uh, Joseph Smith, and uh, he was kind of the kind of always there. You know, the, he was often described as just um constant you know consistent tried and true always always faithful to um to his brother and to the gospel and um you know and and i i I think wouldn't have it any other way i mean he was he was the first to sort of volunteer to um to accompany him through whatever circumstance um, so yeah, I, th- I think he's he's just like the, the sort of the rock, <laughs> yeah, um, of the group. Tell me about Hiram Smith because he is um, kind of, uh, I guess maybe iconic is the right word, kind of an iconic figure in the church's history. How do you prepare to play a character like that? Was there did you have some kind of reference material to source it from, or like how did you prepare to play this part? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, I I think whenever you play an icon and somebody that that people either have preconceived ideas about or strong feelings about, um, you, you kind of have to do the opposite of what you think, and that is to to play against the icon. Because um, the reality is, like as iconic as as anybody in history might have been, they the end of the day they were just people um that had their own fears and insecurities and hopes and dreams just like just like anybody um they were extraordinary obviously in in their own ways um but at the end of the day they were just people doing doing the best that they could and um and so i i kind of gathered what i could just from from some historical accounts uh, you know, in terms of just to get a baseline, okay, who who was this person? What did he do? And then I always just really look to the script first and foremost to to kind of help inform um, what what are the different human elements and emotional elements that the writers are trying to pull out of the character and convey through the script. Um, and so that's that's kind of the the bible, I guess you could say for me is. Um, you know, what is the script informing me in terms of who this person is? And then um, and then trying to, to go even deeper with just how do I how do I make this as genuine um, as I can? How were you uh, cast for this film? So um, my my dad is actually a film composer and had worked on Ceratop Approach and Freetown with Garrett Babby, the director. Um, and when, when he came to my dad, uh, he said, Hey, I'm working on this film. I, I, I want to make it feel like a, like a Western. Um, and he, my dad was super excited. Uh, and I think very shortly after that initial conversation said, Hey, well, my, my son is an actor. You should, uh, you should take a look at him for one of these roles. And so, um, I had worked with Garrett on, he shot a Gentry music video, like, like three or four years ago. Um, and I had been an admirer of his, uh, from, from Saratov approach. Uh, so when he reached out and said, Hey, I'd, we'd love to have you audition. I, I was all over it. Super excited. 
And I'm glad you brought up the, the fact that you're from Gentry, because I want to come back to that here in a minute. But yeah. this uh, this movie, Out of Liberty, it's, you know, it's obviously being promoted as a Western thriller, but there's a strong faith message to it as well. So I guess, would you also call it a faith-based film? Yeah, you know, what, what's interesting about this film is, um, first and foremost, it's a, it's a Western, you know, and, and, it's, and I'll call it just a just a good movie about, um, you know, a historical event. And, and I, and I don't mean this in a, you know, and to, to diminish the film at all, but it's secondary a faith-based film. And I think that that distinction is important because, um, I think a lot of films that are made, particularly in, you know, what I'll call the LDS film genre, they sort of start out with the objective being, a faith-based or faith-promoting film and I, I think the result is often um, material that, that comes across at least to people who aren't of the faith or non-believers as uh, preachy and uh, you know in a way almost manipulative because and not, not from a, not from like an ill intent perspective but a lot of times people that, that have faith and, and feel so strongly about these events, they they want so desperately to, to share that testimony with others and it sort of backfires because it can it can often seem like um, you know, like I said, preachy or manipulative. And and this is is kind of the in my opinion, a great example of a film that, that does it the right way, where first and foremost, it's a great film with great writing, great cinematography, great acting, all the pieces are there, um, and most importantly, a great story. So somebody that knows nothing about the church and its and its foundation and, and starting would would look at this as like as a legitimately good Western. Um, and what's cool is that the the moments in the film where the characters are, you know, basically testifying of of why they believe what they believe and why they're doing what they're doing, it feels totally natural. It feels it doesn't feel forced at all. It makes sense in the context of the movie and the characters. It's great. This uh, Samuel Tillery character, um, it's he's kind of a one of the lesser known figures in the church's history what was the inspiration to tell this story from with that character specifically yeah i um from what i gather i i think that um that he wanted to just be able to to tell the story from from kind of a different perspective you know and and in this case the perspective of somebody that wasn't a member of the faith which again i think is is what really helps the film have a more kind of honest and, and broader appeal is it, it really kind of tries to look at the situation from an outsider's perspective. You know, a lot of times we look at the trials that the early church leaders and members went through in, in somewhat of a, a victimized way. Um, and there's no question that they were, they were incredibly um, treated incredibly poorly. Um, but at the same time, like they weren't perfect, you know, and, and the perception, uh, that, that they sort of conveyed to, um, to the people around them wasn't always positive. Um, and it doesn't, you know, the film doesn't like glorify that or anything, but it, it definitely like addresses it. You know, for example, one of the other characters that's sort of the quote unquote villain character, um, you know, he's he's like dead set on on uh, bringing these men to justice, uh, which basically means like either killing them or seeing them in prison for the rest of their lives. And, you know, the reason is because like his brother was killed in one of the, the scuffles with the Mormons. And, um, you know, so you try to kind of look at it from his perspective of like, man, like, how would I react if my brother was killed by some religious group that I knew very little about? And you could start to see that it, it's not, not far-fetched to see how they might jump to conclusions very quickly um, with some of these uh, scenarios. And so it's just a, it's a really honest film, which I, I appreciate. Now, as you mentioned before, you are in the group Gentry, which is probably what most people know you as, but 
this acting thing is also something that you are involved with. So how did you get your start in acting? You know, um, on the stage, I, I come from the musical theater world, so I uh, I went to school for it for a while. I, I went on Broadway tours for a while. Um, I performed a lot at like Hell Center Theater down here in, in Salt Lake. And uh, and about probably ten years ago, I started just dabbling in film, um, and and it's a totally different experience. And and so I've. I, I love to do it when I can. I I usually do one to two films a year is all just just when I can fit it in. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely in my blood. I love the acting side of things. Is there another film project in the works for you currently? Yeah, so I I filmed a, a film in Fiji um, in what was it May? It's this last May, so it's that's in post production. It's a kind of a Hallmark Lifetime type film called uh, love in paradise and uh that should be released i think sometime in the, the spring or early summer of next year um and uh, and then i i was in another one that hasn't been released yet called green flake um it's the story of uh one of the early um, african-american members of the church that uh, was like one of the bodyguards for joseph smith and uh, tells his story and his his trek across the the United States to Utah. So I played Joseph Smith in that one. Um, yeah, that's that's all in the works. So you're becoming very familiar with the Smith family. Sounds like yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In fact, I I filmed uh, out of Liberty, and then about two weeks later, I filmed uh, Green Flake. So played played both brothers within a month of each other <laughs> yeah wow well that's cool getting back to gentry then you were in idaho falls about a year ago uh yeah. for a concert here and then you'll be returning in december for a christmas show finding christmas yeah. um and i understand the tour kicks off later this month for that christmas show is that is that right it's uh it's actually it kicks off officially november so oh, okay. um we uh, we have a few shows here in, in Utah, kind of pre Christmas shows. We'll throw in a few Christmas songs, uh, but then uh, our big kickoff is Eccles Theater in Salt Lake, and then we go uh, about fifteen cities in total. And Idaho Falls is on uh, the seventeenth. Anything you December. anything you want to say to people in Idaho Falls about this uh, Christmas show and and returning back to this yeah, area? Yeah. You know, we we absolutely love that that part of the state. Um, we've been there several times now between Idaho Falls and Rexburg, just kind of in that area. And every time, we just love the shows. The audiences are amazing. Um, we, uh, of course, have worked a couple of times with East Idaho News and um, just absolutely love doing that. Um and I, I think as far as the Christmas show goes, uh, you know, it's it's 100% like our favorite show we do all year. So if there's ever a question of like, oh, which Gentry concert should I go to? If there's a chance to go to a Christmas show, go to that one. I got to ask you about your recent performance with, with other members of your group at uh, President Nelson's birthday celebration. Yeah, you were one of several artists that but was there. Donny Osmond and uh, Nathan Pacheco. Uh, yeah. How was that experience? Oh my gosh, it was uh, it was surreal. Um, so you know, you're you're in front of twenty one thousand people, and uh, and it's just it, it almost takes your breath away. And then you know, on top of that, you're surrounded by three hundred and sixty five singers behind you and over a hundred orchestra players in front of you um so it it definitely is surreal and we just we soaked it up it was it was an awesome experience talk about let's see uh when so getting back to out of liberty this film first opened in utah what about a month ago yeah uh and how has it been doing there um it's been doing well, I guess. I uh, I just went to a, a screening last week, and the theater was totally full. Um, so 
I, I think that for any local independent film to be in theaters for, for that long is, is actually pretty amazing. You know, you see a lot of these, these smaller films sort of come and go within a week or two. Um, so I think the fact that it's still playing and, and opening up in uh, new markets like, like in Idaho, that's a good sign. Uh, as people attend the movie, what what's the message or the big takeaway that you hope uh, people take from it? I think the big takeaway is um, don't be don't be quick to judge. Uh, the uh, the uh, Porter Rockwell character played by Corbett Allred has this great scene where he he kind of like he kind of poses these these really logical questions to the jailers of, you know, why is it that so many people, like, just absolutely hate Joseph Smith? You know, it's like, he what did he do? He, he built a city, he printed a book, he started a church, and he kind of goes through these things. And then Sam, Samuel Tillery has kind of a similar monologue where he talks about, you know, um, how a lot of people around the area feel like the, the Mormons had kind of put themselves above others as kind of the chosen people and talks about it from, from that perspective. And so you start to see, oh, like, it's not always black and white, you know, cut and dry. You, you kind of have to stop and, and consider um, different perspectives, and, and have patience with those perspectives. Well, Casey, listen, I appreciate your time. Thanks for uh, talking with me today. Is there anything else you want to add about um, Out of Liberty or the Gentry Tour or anything? Well, yeah. I, you know, I'll just mention one other thing about uh, Out of Liberty. Uh, my, my dad actually posted um, this on, on Facebook this morning, and it was a good reminder. It was kind of like what, what he said in his post was, um, the success of these smaller local films is 100% based on on people seeing them in the theater. Um, the this kind of the reality of of these films is that they don't really make any uh, or, or not a lot of money off of everything that comes after the theatrical release. And so, if people want more films like this. Um, to, to come out, it's so important to go support in the theater because that really determines whether or not you know they're going to be able to keep making the movies and and whether or not other people will, will have the courage to step up to make them. So um, you know that's what I would just leave is is uh, you know if there's any question whether or not to see the film, I mean if if the hope is that more films like this get released, then you know please come out and support. Out of Liberty is rated PG and opens this Friday in Blackfoot, Idaho Falls, and Rexburg for showtimes or to purchase tickets. You can visit uh, the official website, outofliberty.com. And for more information about the Gentry Tour and how you can get tickets for the Christmas show in December, visit gentrymusic.com. For EastIdahoNews.com, I'm Rhett Nelson. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.